Hello and welcome to my presentation entitled Public Archaeology via Cultural Heritage Management in Belize. My name is Antonio Berdal. I am a grad student at Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona, and an archaeologist with the Belize Institute of Archaeology. I am a mixed race male. I go by the pronouns he, him, and his. While there are many public archaeology and cultural heritage management initiatives in Belize, I will only be focusing on a few, and this stems from my research done conducting interviews with archaeologists who work in Belize. To situate where Belize is, uh, what you see is a map of Central America and the Caribbean. Belize is a small nation that is bordered by Mexico, Guatemala, and the Caribbean Sea. It has an area of 8,867 square miles with an estimated population of just under 420,000 people. Uh, Belize is multi-ethnic and many languages are spoken in Belize, but the most widely spoken languages are English, Spanish, and Creole. What you see on the screen is a close-up map of the country of Belize as it is bordered by Mexico, Guatemala, and the Caribbean Sea. Cultural heritage in Belize is about self-identification, and this identification comes from the combination of two identifiers, namely ethnicity and culture. Ethnicity in Belize is largely attributed to one's skin color or speech, but also to where you were born in the country and where you live. Cultural heritage in Belize also has both tangible and intangible aspects. The tangible aspects being the archeological heritage and the intangible being living cultures. Uh, the intangible aspects are things that are inherited or passed on from generation to generation and is also something that evolves. The institution that manages cultural heritage management in Belize is the National Institute of Culture and History, which was formed in 2003, and their goal is to help in better understanding of historical and ethnic roots of Belize, as well as the shared cultural heritage and shared cultural identity of Belizeans. And on the screen, you can see how the organization is set up. There are four branches of niche. Those branches are the Institute of Creative Arts, uh, also called ICA, and they are responsible for the creative and art artistic expressions of Belize, such as dancing, music, visual arts, and creative writing. The Institute for Social and Cultural Research aims to promote, retrieve, supervise, document, and also carry out historical, social, cultural, and anthropological research in Belize. The Museum of Belize and Houses of Culture aim to promote, document, exhibit the understanding of Belize's culture and history. And the fourth one is the Institute of Archaeology. Their goal is to research, to protect, preserve, and sustainably manage uh, Belize's cultural and archaeological resources. And on the screen, you can see the logo for the Institute of Archaeology, which I'll from here on call the IA. The IA has two major departments, one of them being the Parks Management Department, and they manage the archaeological reser uh, reserves of Belize, and these reserves function as open-air museums and classrooms. The second major department is the Research and Education Department, and they are responsible for many initiatives, but I will only be focusing on three, uh, namely educational outreach, how they facilitate archeological research in Belize, as well as the inspection of looting and destruction across Belize. On the screen, you see examples of four archeological reserves in Belize, uh, Kalpet, Lamanai, Serpon Sugar Mill, and Akhtun Tunichil Muknal. And it kind of shows you um, the differences in the reserves of Belize, both surface site and cave sites, as well as ancient Maya sites and historic sites. Educational outreach in Belize 
These initiatives are carried out in public venues, mostly done in primary and secondary schools, but also done in many other public festivals and events. Uh, as you can see on the screen, um, staff from the Institute, Institute of Archaeology are interacting with school children, both inside and outside of the class. These initiatives have been largely successful. Um, the IA manages to reach thousands of Belizeans every single year. And th these are carried out by very interactive displays by uh, lectures in schools. And they enhance how many people they reach by partnering with other institutions under niche, such as IACR and the Museum of Belize. The images that you see on the screen um, show two different venues where I interacted with school children of Belize. The one on top was an interactive activity where the school children got to dig inside a mock excavation unit and get the experience of archaeological field methods. And the image below that shows just an artifact display, kind of like a show and tell, where the school kids come to learn about the different artifacts that we found in Belize. Despite having these successes, there are some shortcomings, uh, one of them being a shortage of resources, uh, especially a shortage of staff. The small staff um, does not allow the IA to be in many places at once. For example, if two or three schools want them to be at their school on the same day, this may not be possible because of the, distance, the distances between these schools. The IA um, also um, may not be able to reach every single village because of the distances or the locations of these places. And certain segments of society may not invite the IA to be a part of their community or to come and give presentations in their communities simply because they're not interested in what the IA has to say. And this is largely because there are not enough tailored presentations being done. The IA, although they have a really good record of being involved in schools, they lack involvement of what is being taught in the schools and also lack involvement in the materials that are prepared for use inside the classrooms. The image that you see on the screen is of um, IA staff member Paul Smith talking to some students of a high school in Belize City. Now, if they wanted to do another lecture in a town that was 60 miles away, for example, then that might not be a possibility to do so on the same day. A lot of this can be remedied by uh, increasing the staff, for example, maybe um, getting some interns to come in to be a part of the IA, and this will help them to at least for, for the time being to increase the staff. They can also visit schools in areas of the country they may not have been before and create lectures that are specifically targeted or tailored for certain segments of society. For example, if you go into a community that is largely uh, uh, farming based, then you can create lectures or exhibits that maybe focus only on farming, such as ancient Maya farming techniques. The IA can also be a lot more involved in what is being taught in schools by really working closely with the Ministry of Education to help plan what is taught in schools and also to help design materials used in teaching. The image that you're seeing on screen is the IA conducting a very tailored presentation. This was when they targeted members of their own staff, the rangers and managers of reserves across the country. And so they gave them specific tools to enhance their work as they work on site. The IA helps with the facilitation of archeological research and how information is disseminated to the public. These archeological projects that come in every single year, uh, about 20 of them, and this is pre-COVID and hopefully it's very soon post-COVID, these projects also serve as cultural heritage managers because they hire Belizeans to work with them. And some of them actively train young Belizeans in uh, archaeological field methods. Every single year, there's also the Belize Archaeology Symposium and the uh, consequent publication of research reports in Belizean archaeology. The images that you see on the screen, the one in the top corner is uh, 
Dr. Jason Yeager from the University of Texas at San Antonio talking to tour guides and other local people from the village of San Jose Socots in Western Belize. And in the lower corner is an image of the crowd in attendance at the Belize Archaeology Symposium. Um, many of these projects that work in Belize uh, train young Belizeans, and here I will highlight the Belize Valley Archaeological Reconnaissance Project, BIVAR, and they train uh, young Belizean students and volunteers um, in fieldwork. And what this does is it helps to create a stronger connection between that young Belizean and their own shared cultural heritage and their history. BIVAR also trains a lot of tour guides every single year, and they tailor some of their presentations just for guides. The Belize Archaeology Symposium is attended by many Belizeans every single year, including tour guides, students, and the general public. And this is a place where all the researchers across the country come together and share their new research in one venue. The image that you see on the screen is of two uh, young Belizeans, uh, Frank Sib and Casey Flores, both of them working with BIVAR. These also have their shortcomings. A lot of these projects don't really have a lot of young Belizean participation beyond the role of a hired hand. And this is something that these projects would need to address. There's also the view in Belize of archaeology being a foreign enterprise, uh, mostly because of a negative legacy of archaeology in Belize because of past archaeological practices. So this also needs to be addressed. These projects that come in also come with many um, foreign students. And a lot of these projects also don't really have a public component. So their foreign students are not really well immersed in Belizean culture. And lastly, the papers that are presented at the Belize Archaeology Symposium and the resulting publications are sometimes done in very jargon heavy ways, very academic ways. And this may pose a problem for the lay person in the audience who may not understand what is being said. And on the screen, you can see young Belizeans at work and also um, a poster for the Belize Archaeology Symposium. So to remedy some of this, um, the IA can really work to change the image of archaeology in Belize and address concerns that the public may have in certain archaeological practices. The projects that work in Belize can also um, increase their young Belizean presence on their projects, maybe by actively recruiting uh, young Belizean students at some of the high schools and universities across Belize. They, they can also um, include a public component in their field schools so that their students can have a greater immersion in Belizean culture. And in regards to the presentations that are done at the Belize Archaeology Symposium and the publications, the presenters and the writers can take into consideration that many uh, members of the audience are non-archaeological in nature and that they need to remember this fact when they present their findings. The images that you see on the screen in the top corner are a bunch of young Belizean kids and students working with me at the site of Cajal Petch. And in the lower corner is a uh, is a foreign student who worked in Belize from the University of Texas, San Antonio, Jacob Lozano. And he said that this part of the experience was perhaps the most rewarding for him. Just like any other nation that has a lot of archeology, span uh, a lot of archeological resources, Belize is no stranger to uh, looting and destruction. Uh, to target this, the IA has launched an anti-looting campaign, and this has led to an increase in the reporting of looting and destruction and vandalism of sites. This also led to a legal binding agreement between the governments of the United States and Belize to fight illicit trafficking of antiquities. And this also led to the 
restoration of two sites in Belize that were in danger of being destroyed by the encroaching settlements around it. And on the screen, you see the site of Santa Rita and that structure was restored uh, by the IA. And you can also see a poster that is used in the anti-looting campaign. Once again, the limited resources poses a problem for the IA because they can't be all over the country and sometimes it's hard to access certain parts, especially where destruction of sites may be occurring. The penalties for destroying sites and the penalties for, for buying and selling antiquities are also very weak in Belize. Um, so this is also one of the shortcomings and many Belizeans uh, caught in the act of selling or buying antiquities or destroying monuments also claim ignorance of the law. What you are seeing on screen in the top corner is the destruction of a very tall pyramid at a site called Nomol in northern Belize. And in the lower corner is an image of people selling antiquities on social media in Belize. So to combat this, the IA can increase their public awareness of the laws by going on TV more, by doing more radio shows that speak to the laws um, against looting and destruction, and also by increasing their interaction with law officials such as the police, the army, and customs officials, who may be the first um, the first bodies to really come across these issues. And also increasing prosecution and penalties can show to the public uh, that this is a serious crime and should be addressed. Now, if you have any questions about what I uh, said today or any concerns, please reach out to me um, via this email address that you see on the screen. I want to thank the SFAA, um, Northern Arizona University, the Institute for Archaeology in Belize, as well as the people of Belize. Thank you very much.